and the high table, and all participants. I was praying that I would uh, be allowed to sit a little bit longer to follow some of the aspects of the discussion before coming up, because I, was, I ran from one meeting trying to make it here. However, I guess as um, legislators in this business, we have to be ready at all times. I want to greet you warmly. I think this is my first, second time at an uh, event organized by Reverend Jala and, and, and his team. And I listened to one of our erudite colleagues in the legislature when I came. And I have to say, most of what I heard since I arrived from him, I share very, very strongly. The other day, I was talking with Dr. Sawyer, and a few of us sitting around the table were lamenting that something was missing in our country. And one of those things that we said was missing is, you know, men and women that are, you know, are people we go to when we have a problem, that it's beyond the court, the high court, the legislature, the, you know, people who just by their standing in society demand something. What the interfaith religious body, the interreligious council, and what we call the, what's that, uh, the interfaith, Council played in bringing peace to our country. These were people who did not have guns. They did not have, um, they were not lawyers, whatever. But they just stood in a place when everyone had problems. The thing that we call the, the ECOWAS peace plan came out of the thinking, the minds of Agatha Francis, Sheikha Fuma Connick and the rest of the religious leaders in our country. And they brought in others, you know, academics and what have you. But there is a way that these people earn their respect, or their respect is guaranteed. The state realizes that without such people in society, we, they cannot function themselves. That is why in our villages, and I grew up in a village, the son of a farming chief, they didn't have a prison. People found a way to deal with issues that affected our society, and they did it very well. And during the war, the most influential voices that came that helped us reach to the war and then consolidate the peace was the voices represented by those who were symbols of truth, symbols of justice. Something which, sad to say, appeared to be missing. And I have to say again that when, and starting with President Talbot, well, coming from President Talbot and the others, but during the war, the difficulties of the war, President Sawyer knew that he didn't have army in this town. So the Constitution was in trouble. Laws and stuff were in trouble. The thing he relied on most was those people, those men and women in our society that helped them overcome some of the challenges that, that were facing. It's the state that makes that stand, that these people don't have guns. They cannot put anybody in jail, but the moral authority they represent must be recognized at all times. This is one step I guess we can make and we should do 
That is why when religious leaders, I see the president of the Council of Churches and the others, whenever they appear and they make a request to see President Torbert, or even Samuel Doe, or, you know, and more so, because that was my experience with Dr. Sawyer. It was very, very, it was instantaneous. When you made that request, you had an answer and you will be seen. We have to play this role, and, and I just want to piggyback very quick, quickly on some of the things my, my brother has said. Our country is in trouble. It's in trouble because I think we consciously or unwittingly allowing the Constitution to be washed. And because of that, our courts, the legislature itself where I am, and the other parts of our government, people just do things without any regard to the Constitution. And that is the beginning of trouble. When we do not respect the Constitution, we do not respect the statutes. And something called conscience. When we therefore operate without conscience, then we have to start getting worried for this society. There is the lack of conscience, and you know, more and more, you know, we growing up, going to university, I see my brother, you know, who's going to do the keynote today. When you went to school, going to Kipamas High School or elementary school in Kipamas, if you wore a certain pair of sneakers and you appear before George, uh, Sebastian Bush, they might ask you where you got the money from to buy the sneakers. You had to give account. You had to give account for carrying a wrong pen to work, I mean to whom, after school, because your mom would ask you. Today, with our conscience, we do things. And the example is set by the state. We do things we cannot account for. A young man who was just like myself, managing to pay rent, $10 rent, in few months, now got mushrooms. And it's so apparent, it makes you feel bad in your stomach. And these are the people we clap for, you know? And they tell you somebody else or the man you know how to make life. These are the people we get, we elect. I was passing by the other day. I almost vomited. A gentleman creates a university with his name. So, so and so, and university. Build it. The University of Liberia is looking for money to keep the students in. Where in the hell this man got money from besides the national budget? I went on the team. You hear our national budget. This country has a lot of money available through our budget system. If you just do a little audit of our budget, you'll find the thieves that are wrecking our country. Do we have the Sheikh Afuma or uh, Mary Brunel or Archbishop Francis who will be threatened to be killed because he's able to give a sermon talking about the threat society faces? Each of us, as religious leaders, I see, you know, uh, Bishop Brown. All of these people were just like us, ordinary people. Are we prepared to do that? Ellen Salif, you say all oh, that, but she never celebrated birthday in this. The cabinet one day came to her, and I was in a meeting. They said, let's celebrate birthday, they started to raise money. She said, well, what you do? You all go somewhere and find a project you own, put it on, not me. 
the people we hear about, the greatest leaders of the world, didn't name anything after themselves. Whether it's, it's, it's uh, Mohammed, I mean, for that, they've gone to the extreme. You can't see the picture of Mohammed. At least some people go around and bring a white young gentleman with nice beards at Jesus Christ. The debate continues. But Jesus Christ didn't go around doing things and naming things after himself. The law and conscience tells us that do not name things after yourself when you are in service. Too many things are of conscience that we have to think about. And I'm sorry to shout over you, sir, but I guess something got to happen to our heads. Something is wrong. We had us, um, the other day, we were trying to open the uh, guy opening a, a mental uh, health center. And Dr. Gethe was there. And his speech must be read again. Something is wrong with the mentality in our society. We have mental health problem from the top to the bottom. Yes. Affected by maybe the war. No, we do have. You know, I had a very good friend at the UN. She worked for the UN, psychologist, Egyptian background. And all the women did, she and her husband had an apartment on um, 52nd Street in, in New York, near the UN. The rich apartment. And all she does is to receive officials from the United Nations, including the Secretary General. Who has problem for a thousand dollars a day? I mean, a thousand dollars an hour. Sit with these people. They are big people. They need someone to talk to them. So all she does is sit with them, and they realize that people in certain power, certain positions of power, are affected by the combinations they have. And it's not their problem. It's the kind of thing the society put on them. So there's nothing wrong with people, especially, and that's what the religious leaders have been doing. And I hope they can do it now better. To have the courage to sit with our leaders and say, Chief, the way you're taking the decision ain't right. Because they, we are under so much pressure that we can act like something wrong with our brains. Pray for us. Thank you.